Hello, Charlie, and welcome back to Rock and Roll English. Hello, Martin. Thank you very much for having me back on. It's been a while. Um, yeah, excited to get back into Rock and Roll English. Always, exactly. Yeah, it's been a while. We like to do this every six months ish, I think, yeah. don't we? Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't want to do it too often because no. otherwise we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> you want to keep it exciting as well, don't you? You know, we want to keep our relationship, we want to keep the passion there, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, imagine that in a relationship. I'll see you in six months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll see what Mrs. R and R says about that if I if I mention that to her. <laughs> you doing okay though? Yeah, usual surviving as usual um, is the yeah, best way. Father of two. Yeah, you know what? I was thinking the other day that it's the small things which you don't really appreciate until you have kids. Like, for example, if if I went out for dinner with you okay taking our relationship to the next level <laughs> um, i would now appreciate the fact that you well hopefully didn't piss yourself or shit your pants <laughs> i would also appreciate you probably not throwing food on the floor i would appreciate you not crying um i would appreciate there's so many things which i never thought about i'd appreciate you like not coughing directly in my face um i know a few friends that would challenge <laughs> but yeah i mean that also means that you can have great friendships with people that you don't have much in common with yeah it, my, my yeah outlook of life has just totally changed i think everyone's like well all right now whilst before i had thought you know he's a bit of an idiot but now i think god he hasn't shit himself all day like what a great bloke <laughs> yeah I, i've just been asking myself at what point do it, like you take that for granted because um it, it's a big thing what, now as a as a non-parent at what point do you well, take just it? just for as another human so when you talk to another human that you just think oh you know he he hasn't shit his pants today and that's really good <laughs> yeah that's nice to be grateful for that yeah so always yeah. looking at the positives uh, yeah. in life that that's me now but um so we have a very interesting podcast today because um, Charlie has been a very busy boy and did something recently, which I thought, wow, that is amazing because you did a live podcast in London. So we're going to be talking about live events that has helped me think of a topic, but obviously there's no better place to start than your live podcast. So how was it? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was last week. So it's fresh in my mind. Um, it was so, so fun. I, okay. I had, uh, quite a few nightmares leading up to it. Oh God, I could, food. I wouldn't have slept for a week. I remember before my wedding, well, the night before I actually did not sleep because it was just oh, constant really? nightmares. That's my one regret in life, not getting shit faced the night before my wedding, because <laughs> if I had got shit faced, I wouldn't have thought about it and I would have got some sleep, but right. I didn't but would you not have felt terrible the next day. My hangovers are epic. So yeah, but I just, I was so tired on the day. It was hopefully Mrs. R and R won't listen to this, but it was a bit like, I must admit at some point I did look at my watch during the wedding thinking like, when can I go to bed? <laughs> <laughs> because I was so tired. I had not slept a wink. Yeah. Yeah. Good phrase. I had not. Yeah. Slept a wink. Um, so Stacy, my wife, she planned a lot of the wedding and then she got no sleep because she was stressed about exactly. quite a few things. Whereas I slept and <laughs> I woke up to this amazing day that had been planned for me. And she was just knackered all the way through the day. I was like, this is the best day of my life. She was like, I want my bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah it was similar to you, I guess, in, in some regards. But uh, yeah, so I didn't sleep. Uh, yeah, I had, I had some bad night's sleep uh, leading up to it, partly because of... Uh, the pressure of people flew in. I was so amazed. Whoa. Flew in Whoa. from countries to come and see this. They obviously made a weekend of it, but yeah, that pressure of knowing people flying in for it made me think, okay, I've got to have a really good conversation <laughs> <laughs> for this. Um, so I, I spent far too long preparing for it, which was necessary, but at the same time, stressful. Um, but in the moment and post show it was a really cool feeling because i loved it i loved 
in being on stage and performing and people were laughing it was it was a really nice <laughs> feeling to get that first laughter i can imagine wow yeah. yeah again going back to weddings when i've done the best man duties before yeah. that's pressure isn't it because it's not just talking it's like you have to talk and make people laugh yes. um so yeah, best man duty i am not envious of because of the fact that you're the you're the comedian of the night yeah e exactly yeah um at my brother's wedding actually I, this was like later on i'd you know told some funny stories and then i sort of said well like in all serious you know i really love my brother and i say you could say i love him like a brother <laughs> it was almost nothing there <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for like you know a huge laugh but here i was like you could hear the bloke at the back like coughing <laughs> Okay, let's move on. Uh, what else? Let's just talk uh, about the other really funny things that I said before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was, I would have laughed. I mean, maybe, yeah, it depends on the delivery, doesn't it? Yeah. Is it obvious, the delivery? I think I, think I was building myself up because that was the only real, like, gag I had, yeah, like, proper yeah. joke. And then I think I just went for it too much. I was like, well, you know, I think he'll love him like a brother. <laughs> yeah. and I think uh, that's where... I kind of lost it a bit. Yeah, um, when it's forced, I suppose that's where those mm, kind of jokes are like, ooh, yeah. If it sounds a bit silly and like, ooh, yeah. And this was because, again, when I saw you were doing that, I thought, oh, God, that's such a great idea. I'm definitely going to do this. And then I thought, oh, actually. <laughs> and then I, start, then I started having all of those fears come in. And I think that joke came back to my mind. And I thought, oh, <laughs> no, I'll stick to the online stuff. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> safe behind a screen. Should definitely do it. My my recommendation. So I I did a test email to see how many people were interested. Okay. Quite a few people got back to me and like were confirmed. I had to change the date because the sh the theatre wasn't like able for that for that date, which might have affected things. But I would say less people came than I had predicted. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, that prediction on in hindsight was. I don't know if it was just I don't think it was arrogance, but it was hopefulness mm, of, yeah, of selling out like a whole theater. So I would say start off with a smaller place. And yeah. if you sell out, then that's great. And the like, next time you can go bigger. Like my bedroom, like have like three people in my bedroom record a podcast. <laughs> I'm recording a podcast in my bedroom now. So I suppose it's the full experience you would be getting. And maybe I can fit like four or five people in. Um, again, would have to talk to the wife about this, about having strangers in in our bedroom. Um, but yeah, I suppose it's one thing. If I got an email saying from like a podcast I listened to, would you be interested in a live show in Berlin? I'd be like, yeah, I'll click yes. And then it's like, oh, actually, I'm not, nah. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to actually do it. I, I just clicked yeah, yes yeah. on the form. Like I didn't actually mean yes, of course. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, I should have taken that kind of filtering. For it. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, I've I've been to quite a few live shows of other podcasts that I enjoy, and they do a lot of them. And I, obviously, I I can't go to all of them. And yeah. once I've done one, I sometimes feel like I might might not go to that again. So yeah, there's there's a lot of variables absolutely um, um but so. what you mentioned there about other um, ones you've been to so that's what where we're going now okay to talk about live events okay so i've got a list i had to go to chat gpt to think of like live events you could go to okay so i've got a list and so i'll quickly go through i'll read what i've got on the list and then we will have a look at each one okay so mm -hmm. on my list i've got concert obviously live live event podcasts comedy so like stand up um sporting event theater conventions and expos that one's kind of pushing it a little bit i think but then i've got educational events like conferences political events protests fashion shows and the last one sex shows okay so um now gpt suggest that it, well no i added that one <laughs> <laughs> I saw fashion show and I thought just with show after what else do I know sex show yeah okay I'll add that to the list <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic I don't mean to sound like a prude but what is a sex show is it, oh is in like um strippers uh, no we, we will get to that one though okay because believe oh, me like, I've, okay. I've got a story 
okay, for, I I for that one. Uh, we, we will definitely get to that one. It might even be in the family podcast by the time we get there, but we will get there. So we're going to go through these. So like, have you been to one? What are your thoughts on them? Okay. So, and also maybe think what is your best type of live event? We can maybe do that at the end. Like we'll yeah. analyze them and then what's your best one. So I, concert, concert. Uh, I'd imagine you've been to a concert. I've been to concerts. Yes. Yeah. Um, is is a festival a concert? Yeah, so I've got that on, on my list. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you can count that. Yeah, I, I mean, I went to a concert of a friend who filmed my live show. Okay, he's a musician, um, or was a big musician when he was like sixteen, seventeen. He did tours around England at that age, and now he's kind of got a real like corporate job <laughs> real job i love that expression <laughs> he was a musician it's, it's not a fucking job uh, he's got a real job now he works in finance <laughs> I had corporate there. <clears throat> he's got um a corporate job okay <laughs> but he did a passion a, a gig for a passion project kind of thing the other day and uh, i went to that so i experienced that concert which was which was cool i should do more of them because I, I really appreciate live music mm. um it's nice to be in the room with the artist. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's special. Um, yeah. So concerts, I think, would be near the top of the list for me of like best. But like with the caveat that I do also need to be very intoxicated to really get the full experience. Like when you're really like being at a festival day, the last act, whoever is on, and it's someone you really like, my God, that that is big um for example i remember seeing oasis in 2005 at the v festival mm -hmm. and oh yeah that that was big and i must admit i've been to other concerts whilst not being intoxicated and again mm -hmm. have found myself looking at my watch thinking what time does this finish again yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so i went to glastonbury last year oh wow i've only been to two festivals in my right. life i think the other one yeah i think i've only been to two as well festival when i was 21 and this one last year so um i was similar to you and i was a bit upset at how if it's a main stage and it's a very popular act you've got to get there at least an hour before oh, fuck that yeah yeah you've got um, to wait and and if you want to continue drinking you've got to consider how many drinks you want how warm you want to drink oh, them, and peeing as a oh. night I was just about to go to that one. And if you're asking, yes, I have peed in a cup have at, you? at a festival. I'm not throwing it because, you know, people do that and then they throw it, don't they? Well done. Well um, done. <laughs> I just wanted to underline that I'm not a total scumbag. OK, um, so that involved me dancing for like, well, dancing, sort of listening to music for like an hour with two very large plastic uh very large paper cups of my own piss uh trying obviously not to spill it um i was disgusted thinking it was plastic but thank god it's paper no, it was paper yeah um that was when i was at one in spain and yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't great but the good thing is then you do get a bit of space because everyone kind of doesn't want to stay sit stand near you so it is a good way to get like your own bit of space <laughs> but uh <laughs> Oh yeah. God! I can't believe what you said about throwing it. I've... Oh, oh yeah. I've, I've, I remember specifically my friend getting a what we seemed like a drink thrown at him, and all that we said was that is a very, very warm drink. If that's a drink, um, <laughs> it was a drink. It was just filtered through a human. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, yeah. But yeah, so concerts for me would be right near the top. But okay, let's move to the next one. Podcast. What? So I've been i've only been to one live podcast which um was a football one writers from the guardian just oh, get, yeah. that in, get that in there okay guardian so it was an intelligent football one okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> and i mean i must admit i actually wasn't a big fan because like for example if you go to like a concert or something not i'm not saying your gig was shit or anything no, like I that mean, but <laughs> like you're keen to do it but you're like as an audience member, terrible. Yeah, because there there is no like if you go to a concert, there's atmosphere, like and right. or like if you go to well, a football match, there's atmosphere, but you might see something, someone does something, and you're like, wow, like takes your breath away. But if you're just going to watch some people have a chat, 
Um, yeah. And I remember the person did make a joke about that. He said something like, thanks for coming to watch three blokes have a chat. Three blokes that have never even played football because they were just journalists. <laughs> um, and then I did kind of question what I was doing there. <laughs> but terrible what, start to the conversation to yeah exactly to start this seed of doubt in everyone's mind why are we here? oh yeah why are we here yeah i really did then start thinking what the hell am i doing but what about your experience with watching and live I, podcasts so my love for it started with a man that got on stage with another man with a plastic bag on his head to hide his identity. I was going to say, is that safe plastic bag? Maybe yeah, I would no. use cardboard box with holes in so I can breathe. Yeah, he did have a, a gap for his uh, eyes and mouth. Okay. But, yeah, his name is, uh, well, he goes by the stage name is Blind Boy. He's an Irish, okay. uh, music, was musician and now podcaster. Okay. Um, he, he's a cultural podcaster um and mental health but really so look, look Char charlie's podcast i went to a football one he's gone to this cultural mental health all of this stuff sure yeah you can tell the difference guys yeah uh, exactly so his was his was quite insightful like as a listener through the apps and stuff um so i was excited to see his live one his guest was not my cup of tea okay um, but still I loved the fact that it's such a niche audience and we're all in the same room together. Yeah, that, 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 is, uh, that is good, I must admit. I love yeah. that feeling yeah. that everyone here has a really, really specific interest that I also have. Yeah. I enjoyed that immensely. So yeah. that was part of why I wanted to do it. Mm. And then I went to see some comed comedians do some live podcasts as well. Well, this brings me on to the next one, actually. Comedian, because like stand-ups as well. So, for example, I saw Ricky Gervais, I think Wembley Arena. And again, I came out of that and I was a bit like, why did I spend all that money? Travel like after work all the way to Wembley. And because obviously Wembley Arena is very big and you kind of, you can't really see him. And then you're just looking at, you're basically watching a screen and I'm thinking I could have just watched that screen at home. Like, yeah, um, I've, been, I've been to Wembley for a comedian, uh, Lee, not Lee Mack, Lee Evans. The really okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Sweats through his, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I watched him through the screen and I, also I get quite tired if it's hot. My eyes really struggled. <laughs> Wait, that's the last thing you need as a comedian seeing someone I know. sleeping. I know. And the, and if the seat isn't comfortable and it's like eight to ten p.m., I'm like I'm ready to fall asleep right now. <laughs> so I'm yeah. A lot of the time, live events, I'm struggling to stay awake, which is very old manish. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's frustrating to be paying and then be like, I just want to fall asleep right now. Yeah, exactly. Maybe the cinema yeah and yeah again i've been even at concerts when i'm i mentioned i was looking at my watch kind of thinking i think i would actually rather be in bed now than here i've paid money to be here i've traveled here and i'm looking at my watch thinking i would prefer to be in bed and that's a sad state of affairs isn't it when <laughs> when that's happening <laughs> yeah but the flip side so the last comedian podcast it's called bud pod it's two um uh, so there's one, uh, he's Malaysian, British and one South African, British comedians. They do a podcast. I mean, it's pretty lowbrow. It's it's uh, they, <laughs> they, they get um, listeners sending in their stories of pooing themselves. Right. It sounds quite like rock and roll English, actually. Yeah, <laughs> it's really good. It, it could be quite interesting for that for your listeners as well. So I went to two of their live shows and uh, both times it was incredible and and just having an audience laughing at the same time, everyone getting the same gags, it, it really, I think that's what I'm chasing as a live audience member, mm. trying to be part of that yeah. emotion at the same time. That, that That is good. But okay, so moving to the next one, though, sporting event, like that, the, the atmosphere, like, well, I know you're not a massive football fan, but at times when I've been to a football match, I mean, you do you do end up going to lots of football matches that are absolutely shit, but you can, when you go to that special one and then something amazing happens, right? There, there, there really is nothing like it. And just that, that atmosphere of like when a goal goes in 
it's yeah. just for, for me there's nothing like it and i enjoy it more I, I went obviously a lot when i was a child probably more certainly more than i do now but when you're an adult and you make a whole day of it like you get on the train early like you're drinking and then singing like a madman oh my god there, there's nothing just gives you the license to behave like a yob like uh so yob being a nice word for hooligan ish i suppose um yeah i i would argue that yob is a hooligan without the violence yeah i think that describes me quite well <laughs> because i i'm not a violent person but i do like to act like a hooligan as, it, as, as if i'm a hooligan. Know it. <laughs> yeah. um, and there, there is just nothing better what was your experience so you, you must have been to a football match in your life yeah yeah i've been to probably 20 i'd say okay right i've been to quite a few but um not for a few years i think my main gripe with it is that i don't know any of the chants the song right. okay stuff. yeah so i feel like an imposter and i'm a bit conscious of my behavior obviously <laughs> no one is caring but i'm still like oh i don't know the words <laughs> you, you think caring. everyone's looking at you going why is he not singing what an idiot yeah. <laughs> shame, shame. <laughs> yeah yeah R rather embarrassingly i have found myself in the past googling uh chants before oh, I, I go that's good I, I like that i'm gonna do that it's it's not a very like if you get caught doing that like on the train it doesn't it's not good for your street cred as a yob uh no. so but yeah. it, he's not a yob yeah exactly he's, he's just, googling how to be a yob a yob wannabe 